Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the Sage 2024 Showcase. We have Sonic Eclipse being our next game, the first proper Sonic game on our showcase. Started out early with Sonic games. Uh, I think last year it took a while before we ended up uh, spinning to play one of them. But there are, of course, a lot of Sonic fan games on Sage. That's always the case. That's always a tradition. That's how this this how that's how this expo started in the first place, after all. And while it's expanded to many many other things now, there's always going to be those Sonic fan games. So Sonic Eclipse here. Uh, it has a description, as all of them do. Let's see what it says. Uh, looks like Eggman's up to something, but this time, things don't go as tattlecheat.png planned right from the start. I think there was an image in the middle of that for some reason. Sonic will have to team up with both friends and foes in this risky but exciting new adventure. <laughs> I just realized that that story sometimes is, Eggman is doing a thing, Sonic's got to team up with his friends to stop him. That is... That is not even a story for Sonic, though, at this point. That's just... That's just norm. <laughs> uh, let's see. There's tips. You can do a jump dash while double jumping, but it consumes five rings each time you use it and makes you vulnerable. What? A ring-costing jump dash mechanic? But also, what's this about double jumping? I'm, that's different. I mean, you could do that with electric shield in, in, in numerous games, but... Okay, this sounds like it's going to be a bit different. Its description doesn't actually give me that much information. You could have it... You can have an adventure slash generation style spin dash by pressing the C button deep on keyboard. For the boss, you can roll while on the air. On the air? Use this to its potential to beat Eggman. This is not associated with the other Sonic Eclipse or Sonic Eclipse Online. There's multiple Sonic Eclipses? I'm very confused. This demo, contain, this demo contains all acts of the first zone, Wily Weather. Wily Weather? Including the boss. Hope you'll enjoy it as much as we enjoyed making it. This is not a definitive look into the game. Yes, it is a demo. So I'm feeling like so, so sometimes a game's description on Sage gives you a lot of information and sometimes it gives you more questions than answers. I feel like I'm in the latter category here. Let's see what we got here. But of course, before we begin, uh, if you like the video, do think about getting a like. If you haven't subscribed yet, think about doing that as well. But if you really want to help out, think about coming over to Twitch. Uh, we are trying to reach partner, but of course, need more viewers to do so. So if you want to come by, whether to lurk or to talk, think about doing so. It does help out uh, immensely, and we'd also love to have you. We also have a pretty cool Discord community if you want to check that out. I have a coffee link if you want to help directly monetize my content, and I have a merch store if you want to buy some cool stuff. Link's in the description. Check them out if you feel like it. But we have here today Fair Reese and Crimson. Hello. Hope Hello. You guys, yeah. hope you guys are doing well today. Uh, obviously, uh, Crimson and, and Fair were here for the last video that we just did, too. But Reese showed up, too. So I hope Reese is having yeah. a good day as well. Oh, yeah. Okay, good. I guess let's fire this up, then. Um, we go back to the options menu because it did not save my window size. Oh, there. that sucks. Yeah, it doesn't, it doesn't do that. Uh, and I guess let's go to the tutorial because it sounds like there's weird controls in this one. Okay. Level design by Adplux. Music by Adplux. Okay. Alright. How do I double jump? Press A or B to jump. Yeah. Down and jump key to form a dash. Yeah. Press the C button to form a quick spin dash. So you can. Thankfully, this does work on controller. Though, though it doesn't seem to state it. Press jump button twice to form a dash. Okay. Wait a minute. Really? Um, oh, right, consumes rings, right. So, I can't do it again. <laughs> yeah, be oh, wait, wait. They're introducing a mechanic. But there's- I don't have a ring counter right now. Would it be yeah, helpful to pre present me that information while telling me about a mechanic that uses rings? I, I don't know. Press up and jump to do a super kill out. Ah, oh, yes, this thing that everybody loves these days. I don't really... I don't feel that... I don't feel that particularly invested in that mechanic, but it seems like it's quite popular these days. One thing I do with, like, though... Though I haven't really gotten used to using it, is that one kill out you can do while in the air that Mania introduced, where you, uh... Hold down, Drop jump, them. and up, I think it is, and... Oh, the insta-spin dash? Yeah, so the moment you land on the ground, you do a little spin. I do kind of like that. I've never gotten used to it though it's like it's like new technology to me and i just can't figure it out <laughs> it's cool though i mean you just gotta hold drop dash yeah the drop dash yeah drop dash. Just gotta hold 
the I button see. in the air, though. So Wily Weather. Well, I could tell which Badnik is the custom Badnik. <laughs> I don't think it's valid as either anything. It just stands out a little bit. Yeah, a bit of a. Kind of. When you put different. it right next to a, a Badnik from Sonic Three, it's kind of. The difference is kind of striking. <laughs> is this just a lawnmower? Hello. Alright, I think that was from a game. I can't. I, I think that was a Knuckles Chaotic uh, Badnik, actually. What? What are? I picked up dark rings. Oh, maybe they're eclipse rings. There you go. I don't know. The, the game. The tutorial. The tutorial did not mention. The tutorial did not mention a single thing about that. But I picked up dark rings. So. Cool. Weird. <laughs> Here's your rings, cat. Yeah, I have them now. I find it very bizarre that they were like, oh, this ability the Psy can use, it's gonna cost rings. That's a really weird thing. I mean, I'm not necessarily saying it's a bad idea, but... Oh, dang it. I thought the fish was... Usually they were next to bridges, so I didn't expect that. <laughs> oh well. Also, like, why make it cost rings when it's an ability Sonic's had in multiple games? That too. If it was, like, something really fancy and new, I'd be a little more... Understanding, but music's nice. Okay, no, no bonus at the checkpoint. Got it. Probe. Fly. Oh, there he goes. All right. <laughs> Because he's not working like he does in the Quag Ruins, though, where he just, like, sticks to you. Oh, by the way, these are some of the hardest enemies for me to deal with in a Sonic game, no joke. Emerald Hill, first stage, first zone of Sonic 2. Every time I attack these guys, I get hit by their coconuts before I hit them. <laughs> I don't know, I just have... I cannot deal with their coconuts. You heard it here first, guys. Charm has some problem with nuts. <laughs> Coconut specifically. <laughs> oh, hello. That guy's just stuck. They start playing Coconut and Mall. Oh no. <laughs> Coconut and Mall, but in minor key. That's a that's a version that exists. Oh no. That's it. Uh, it we it have sounds a like impending spooky skeleton music. That's what it sounds yeah. like in a minor key. Yeah, we have a different name for that one. <laughs> uh, here's okay. Let's see. What does this do to my ring counter? It gives me five rings. Okay. So it's um, it's half a monitor box without being a monitor. Okay. Oh no! Warning. Oh god! What the what the hell just happened there? Okay. All right. Well, I, I was gonna bring fifty rings to the end to see if there was a special stage, but there. But uh, guess not. <laughs> I mean, it's a demo, so it doesn't. It's not like I can collect all the emeralds, but. I'm curious if there is a special stage. I'd like to see what they produced, if so. Okay. So, the music is properly custom, I believe. Okay, well, I don't get to listen to it now, but. <laughs> Fine. What? Sir, what? Sir. Sir, that's not how you fly. <laughs> Don't worry, physics there was good. He's having a good time, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> physics doesn't apply to him. Just the spinny steel song is going on. <laughs> oh, for fuck's sake. Thanks for placing it- oh, oh good, the spring over- Wait, I hit the spring before I spun dash into the enemy there? How the hell did that happen? What should have happened there is I collided with the enemy in my spin dash, then I hit the spring unfurling me. But somehow I managed to hit the spring before I hit the enemy. I think enemy's I bit off, that's too small. Probably, that's the only logical explanation for that. Also, does the- also, uh... Spring, bring it to the middle of the uh, 
spring when you hit it. Well, I guess we can fight out with the slow dash. Yeah, it looks like it pulls me. Ah, oh, it pulls you to it, I see. I mean, that's not necessarily a bad thing, but with that enemy and spring... Honestly, that's, the whole spring placement there was kind of bullshit. Because the springs were about to be up to a very enclosed space with an enemy that goes to the edge of the platform. That's a little bit mean. Because I couldn't not avoid the enemy, really, when springing up to them. If, if they were in the wrong spot, if they are staying in the wrong spot, I'm just kind of messing. Oh my god, developer, could you maybe... Here's the thing about springs in Sonic games. It, they they unfurl you. you. You are not able to attack an enemy if you're in spring mode. Do you notice, though, how often the developer is putting a spring down and then having an enemy at the next ledge up that I have to suddenly, like, process and deal with when I literally can't attack? It's not yep. very good design, is what I'm trying to say. Sonic like, 3 like, look, 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 look at this! Look at, look at this shit! If I hug- if I hug this wall, that enemy on the right will hit me. But if I go- if I lay left, this frog is a danger. Developer, what is your fucking deal, man, with these spring placements? I mean, to be fair, you know, not every Sonic game had very good spring placements, so... True, but this is really horrible, like, look at this. Like, if I jump on this spring, I can't see the enemies before I go up there. If I hold up for five seconds, I can see one of the enemies, but I wouldn't even be aware of the other one. In fact, in this situation, if I were being super cautious, I, I slowed down and I looked up. Oh, there's an enemy up there. Okay, that's fine. I'll just hug the right wall. Oh, no! And then I get hit by that guy. You know? Like, it's just... It's very bad... The, the level design is not impressive, is what I'm saying. Also, while I appreciate the custom music, this doesn't feel like Sonic music. This feels like... a uh, J-pop or something? I don't know. <laughs> I'm not saying that Sonic can't explore different genres, but... Not really, I'm not really feeling this one. If you were playing as a different character, maybe. Oh, sure. I still appreciate the effort, sort of, of this game. Like, it does have- I do appreciate the custom music. I think it's made for the game, from what I understand. Because I, I feel like Act 2's music was a progression in Act 1. Um, the graphics are kind of hit and miss for me. Like, technically, we're just in a blue version of Green and Emerald Hill smashed together. There is some custom uh, background art that, like, that the clouds of the moon look kind of nice. Uh, but it does... I'm a little sick of... Oh, here's the boss tape, okay. What do they got going? Um, sick of I'm a little sick of, Hill let's make it look like Green Hill Zone. A lot of Sonic fan games do this, actually. Well, I've got to say, they do the same thing with Mario games with World 1-1. I mean, it's obviously an ice level, but it's very Blue Hill Zone. Wait, uh, this I mean, is... I've heard this song before. This isn't custom. I think. Sounds familiar. Yeah, I've heard this song before. What is it from? Oh. It sounds very Sonic CD like, but it's not the boss thing from that game. Either either version of CD, that it's not that boss thing. Also, I'm, this is a boss stage. I guess there's still a level to go through, though. Dev, that's an enemy that I can't attack the top of because he has a spike on his head. And you literally rolled me down into him from above. What is this level design? <laughs> this is level design, seriously. This reminds me of uh, Sonic. What happened there? <laughs> oh, this is gonna be interesting. Did you see oh, what I... just happened there? Not I mean, yet. yes, he has a spike now, but when I enter the room, I just got hurt for no reason. He didn't have a spike. That is, the... is, is this what we're doing? We're doing Sonic 1 Robotnik, but instead of a giant ball, he has just a little, little dude. Also, wait, how do I... Oh! So, again, I can't attack off the spring, so I guess they... Ex oh! Oh, you piece of sh Okay. Here's my biggest beef with tutorials in video games. I think tutorials are great. I think it, the fact that they can teach you how the different moves work in a game is great. 
However, what I despise is a tutorial that tells you how to do half of the things and makes no mention of the other half of the things. So you walk out of the tutorial feeling like, okay, that's the move set. I understand. And you continue to, and then you play the game not using the other half of the moves because the game never told you about them. So anyways, you know the whole spring thing I've been saying? In this boss fight, I was like, what the hell do I do here? I have to spring off these springs to, to get to the boss's level, but then I'm in spring mode. I can't attack. I just get hurt. Well, guess what? This game lets you refurl in by pressing jump after hitting a spring. Would have liked that in the fucking tutorial. Yeah, that should be known in advance. Yeah, that's this not whole, the this, All this level design too. makes a little more sense knowing that now. That is, that is actually vital information. Like, literally, you can't fight this boss without knowing that. I had to figure that out, so... But also, this boss fight is stupid. Um... Alright, well, maybe I'll get- maybe I'll get more interesting for saying in a minute. Oh, he drops rings. They expect you to use that, uh... That dash to attack him. I think the spike speeds up. Now, I'm noticing that if I hit him, the spike is not dangerous to me. Like, there is iframes. The spike also has iframes and doesn't make contact with me. My- Sorry, but like, the levels- Okay, even knowing that I can furl in now after hitting a spring, which, by the way, some games, some side games do let you do that. But again, the game, the game's tutorial literally told me how to jump. So I expect the tutorial to tell me all of my moves, right? Not just some of them. And then like, oh, we will tell the player about this. Like, <laughs> it told me about the air dash. But the air dash is like far less important than simply knowing that you can furl up after hitting a spring. And if it makes a sound effect, like it's an actual special little move. Like, oh, look at that. Um, man, that's annoying. Like, even even knowing that now, though, if I go through the level, if I went through the level again, and knowing that I could furl up after hitting a spring, well, that would make certain parts easier. But not all parts. Remi reminder, I just rolled down a slope into an en in onto the top of the head of an enemy that had a spike on its head. This is still bad level design, even if you can furl up with a spring. Honestly, yeah. I love how condensedly annoying that was. This wasn't long at all, but man, that annoyed me. <laughs> I, uh, design. The level designer doesn't know what they're doing, and the tutorial maker needs to actually make a tutorial that tells you everything. Yeah, that throws me off. If a tutorial seems to be telling me all my moves, then I walk away from a tutorial in a game thinking, that's what I can do. And if there's new stuff later that I unlock or something, the game will tell me then. That's what I that's what I believe when I go through a game tutorial. I've been taught everything I initially know, initially can do, and if I get new stuff later, the game will tell me then. So if the game doesn't tell you a vital mechanic for the level design in the tutorial, then yeah, I probably won't figure it out for a while. <laughs> I only figured it out at the end there because I was required to at that point, you know? Oh. Yeah, I'm not so well, sure. Like, this isn't the word. Like, they're using a good framework, I think, here, so it's, like, running just fine. Yeah, Harmony Framework Plus. Remember what I said about there being a million side frameworks? So, Harmony Framework Plus. I don't even know what that one is. I don't think I've heard of that one. <laughs> but, um, my goodness. Sega so did have a stage where you could spin dash into spikes, I think, in Sonic 3. Yeah, I, th I feel like that was an additional troll move, though. Wasn't it? There's a spike that sends you back into spikes. Like, uh, the, 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 the spring that sends you back into spikes. There's been asshole moves in, in the franchise, don't get me wrong. But never this many. This quick. Yeah. And a lot of those asshole ones in Sonic 3 got removed in Sonic 3 and yeah. <laughs> I The music is good. 9 out of 10 for JV. I can't tell if it's a custom soundtrack. Let's see here, actually. Did the write-up tell me anything about that? I think it said something about that. Um, let's see. It says Trist, composer and playtester. Um, for further notice, composer, Ilpux, composer, three, no, Savvy, artist, full game composer. They're, they have three composers, and then they also have a fourth person that's the full game composer. I'm, I'm confused. Did, are they doing all the music? What about the other three people? Well, regardless, they have composers, so... Yeah, I think it's custom. The last song I swear was from something. I can't. I can't place it though. Maybe somebody in the comments. Maybe. Had. 
Maybe it was just so generic that it sounded like it was from something. It's possible. It was perhaps picking up cues from other Sonic songs that I just thought it sounded like a different song that actually existed. But maybe it was just effectively just doing little riff remixes of other Sonic songs. So, uh, But there's possibly promise here. I, I don't know. Right now it feels pretty generic uh, and pretty basic. But, you know, I just still encourage them to keep going and see if they can refine this into something with its own personality. Currently, I don't see a personality. Like, why is it called Eclipse? I assume the dark rings are Eclipse rings. You think the tutorial would have brought them up. Like, look, we have new rings, guys. Like, this is a new feature. But yeah. the tutorial didn't even mention them. So I'm not sure what those were exactly. I assume so. But, uh, yes, yeah, I Eclipse. Not... Not terribly impressive. The framework it's running on makes it play fair enough. Like, like the controls are fine. Level design really is not good. They need to reevaluate that. Um, sometimes it makes it a good thing. This is true, though. After having seven years of covering Sage, I will say I have seen a lot of basic Sonic demo fan game demos, and that's fine. You gotta start somewhere, you know. But I do hope that these projects can develop into something with their own identity. Because there's a lot of Sonic fan games out there that don't have an identity, in my opinion. Or don't have a strong one, at least. So I look forward to seeing what they can do with it in the future. If, indeed, I see them on another stage in the future. So, that was Sonic Eclipse, Sage 2024 demo. Yeah. 